Hello, and welcome to my review of the CompTIA Sizer Plus CS0003 beta exam. I took the exam last night, and I thought it would be good to give some insights as to what to expect when you take this exam. To give you my background in cybersecurity, I have a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity, I have the CompTIA Security Plus certification, and I've worked in a cybersecurity company for over a year, where I worked three months as a security analyst, and then the remainder of my time was as a software developer. In the beginning of the year, I did about three months of study for the CS002 exam, but I ended up not taking the exam. So when I heard that about this beta exam, I thought I may as well just go for it. So in preparation for taking the beta exam, I spent the past two days listening to Jason Dion's Udemy course for CS002, just listening to it in the background, while also taking his practice exams. In this exam, I had 110 questions, with four of them being performance-based questions. Majority of these questions were based on the CS002 content, and of the questions I took, there were only five which I knew were definitely part of this new exam, but it's possible I had more questions which were brand new to CS0003, but I answered them without realizing they knew. So the four performance-based questions I had were all based on CS0002. So if you get the same questions as me, I'd recommend going over and having a good understanding of network devices, services and the ports they use, and which ports are vulnerable. Two of my performance-based questions were based on this, where you had a network full of different devices and you had to figure out which services are running, what ports they're running and which ports should be disabled. So a variety of different things surrounding services, the ports they're running and any vulnerabilities surrounding that. So one of my questions was also a phishing attack simulation where you get to see the phishing attack email and then you have to go through logs of uh, the email network and system device to figure out which users fell victim to this phishing attack and ran an executable. And then the last performance based question I did was a simulation of a SOC case where a user is having issues with the device and you need to look through, figure out what the problem is based on the description of the issue, uh, information for the device and information for the processes which are running. These performance based questions weren't overly difficult but if you don't have any experience sitting in front of a computer interacting with a real device then you will have difficulty in this. From other reviews I watched for this exam, I saw some people talking about how there were questions specific to programming such as having to read Bash, PowerShell or Python code. I had no PowerShell or Python questions, but I did have three questions which involved being asked which of the following lines of Bash code would best meet the following requirements. So for this one, with Bash, I recommend understanding the Bash commands ping, traceroute, dig, grep and awk and you also need to have an understanding of how piping between commands work. I also had two questions about key performance indicators, which are definitely new to this exam, and which, if you don't know, KPIs are metrics used to measure the performance of something. In this exam, KPIs are in the context of how a SOC operates and how you can measure the performance of a SOC analyst. So do a bit of research into how these measurements may be done. I thought I would also give some info about how taking a Pearson View online exam works. So if you've scheduled the exam, you should have the option to go to the Pearson View website and test to see if your device is uh, compatible. Uh, so to be compatible, you need to have speakers, a microphone, a webcam, a stable internet connection, be willing to exit from any programs that you're currently running, which the Pearson View program doesn't want you to run, and you must also only have one monitor. There may be more requirements as to what you need to follow to do this exam, but I didn't come across any others. When you take the actual exam, you also need to do the same process again where you test to see whether your computer is compatible. But this time you also need to take a picture of yourself, a form of identification, and four images of the room that you're in. This can either be done through the webcam you're using, or you can use a phone to read a QR code that's on the screen, and then it prompts you to take the pictures that it wants. So you take the pictures on your phone and then submit them from there. In my case, before I started the exam, the proctor asked me to use my webcam to show what my workspace looked like because the images I took weren't clear enough. So I did that, took the camera off this monitor right here and showed them around. And when they were happy with that, that's when they started the exam for me. So after this, it's basically the exact same as if you're taking a Pearson View exam from an on-site location. I hope this review of the CompTIA Sizer Plus CS0003 beta exam was useful. If it was, please give a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos that I upload.